Also with Design Make Build, the make face, uh, the place where you, you manufacture the products off-site, they're involved in the design phase because you really don't want to design the product you're building, your home, without having manufacturing involved. You really want to bring them into the process, collaborate with them, so they can help you determine the best way to manufacture that, that home. Uh, what's the most efficient, what's the most cost-effective way of manufacturing that home? Let's put ourselves in the seat of the builder currently. You're used to conventional construction. Perhaps a mindset needs to change because you're used to an architect shoving stuff downstream, maybe minimal coordination with a fabrication department. But think about the opportunity that this presents if we really do approach it in a holistic way. Those thought processes are no longer limited to someone's specific design division or fabrication solution. Around the world, we're seeing the proliferation of offsite construction. We're seeing innovations come, you know, new types of components, modular construction. But what we aren't seeing is we aren't seeing a formal industry arise to support the successful adoption of offsite construction. And that's what MyTech's really committed to, is enabling that industry, not just providing a solution here and a solution there, or building one better building. You know, we're really focused on delivering those enabling solutions so that everyone can build better. Welcome, I'm Katie Corman, MyTech Corporate Journalist. We are so excited to present to you our Design Make Build series. In this session, we're going to be talking about make. Joining me, Brian McCormick, Senior Vice President of Offsite Building Solutions, and Mark James, Vice President of National Accounts. Gentlemen, I'm going to have you each tell me a little bit about your role with MyTech and then a little bit about your background. Brian, we'll start with you. Great, thanks. So my focus really is on accelerating the adoption of offsite construction. And when we say offsite construction, we're talking about that, that broad spectrum from a kit of parts to components straight up through volumetric modular. And really our focus and my focus is how can we bring the right combination of products, technologies, best practices to really enable an entire industry to adopt a better way of building. I've been with MyTech for 23 years now. Um, I started in the construction industry in the lumber side um, and have spent much of my time at MyTech really developing technology that advances offsite construction. We'll talk more about that, I'm sure, but the idea that designing upfront, building before you build, really has been the core of what I've focused on for the last 20 or so years. And Mark? I've been with MyTech 22 years, and most of that time was spent in the LBM arena as well as trust plants working through advanced components, which is helping me in my role of manager of national accounts, working with, again, that LBM, the customer, the trust plant, HVAC, and even retail to help them support the offsite construction market. Great. Gentlemen, we are going to be talking about make in this session, but I think we have to go back and sort of touch on design again. Uh, make most successful when it starts with design. I think that the key to successful offsite construction is really getting it right before the make occurs. You know, there's no winging it in this deal. You know, we're not on, the, we're not on a job site and say, well, you know, that's not quite where we thought it should be. Let's hit that with a bigger hammer. Let's wire this in a different way. We're, we're fabricating, whether they're components or, or volumetric modules, we're fabricating them in a shop hundreds of miles away. So the design intent has to be fully captured, fully understood, and communicated with real clarity before it hits that shop floor, if there's really any chance of that fitting together successfully on the job site. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Brian. And I'll stack on that by saying having that design completed and accurate will also help with purchasing inventory. It will help with lack of waste. Uh, and then since we're building in an offsite arena, there's a level of safety there that I don't think you can get in the field. That's right. So let's talk about the digital tie-in to make. Yeah, absolutely. As I mentioned, if we have that digital model that can really help manufacturers off-site get their inventory correct, and there's a safety aspect as we talked about too, but it also can help with automation to manufacture these components off-site. MyTech has a lot of tools to automatically harvest lumber, 
automatically cut, precision cut and precision mark lumber to manufacture roof trusses and wall panels and other advanced components like floor cassettes. Yeah, and that's going to increase, increase quality, but also dramatically improve productivity. Absolutely, absolutely. Not only that, with, this, with all these components produced off-site, we can deliver them to the job site in an organized fashion in order to get that building up as quickly as possible. Excellent. Great point, guys. Uh, but, but we know that really not everything's going to be automated. So, Brian, how do, how do we ensure, preserve that design intent? Yeah, that's a great question. And Mark, you hit it that, you know, when it comes to some of the structural components, I think is a good example, wall panels, trusses, we really can leverage some automation where we've got some repeatability, we're bringing a saw into play. But as you start to move up that spectrum to more complex multi-trade components, mm -hmm. like a fully outfitted wall or a full volumetric room, all of a sudden there's sanding drywall and fitting pipes and running electrical. Mm -hmm. It's not likely that we're gonna automate these steps soon. That's when some technology really could come into play, we think. We think that there's a way to bring that digital asset that you talked about, that truly detailed, fully accurate, fully coordinated among all of the, pl all of the players, bring that right into the plant and just make it as unambiguous as possible, as clear as possible for the installers to get that right. Because there's no fixing it later. It's got to fit on site in that piece. We're not just going to, well, we'll get that later. We've got to get it done right there. So I think, uh, I think there's some opportunities to bring that clarity, that, uh, that uh, bring clarity and reduce ambiguity on the shop floor. So I've heard you both mention procurement, inventory. I hate you both to expand a little bit on that. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Uh, when I think of inventory, I like to compare and contrast on-site and off-site construction. We're in the on-site arena. Timber's brought there, lumber's brought there. There's a lot of cutting that, can, that needs to happen. There's hoppers, there's garbage. There's things that need to happen there. If you switch to off-site construction, to think about the wall panel arena, we're using that digital design, design to get the exact amount of inventory we need to, to minimize waste. And then we're delivering that component to the job site. We're minimizing waste, we're minimizing possible theft, yeah. and again, we're maximizing that, uh, the, the construction of that building with those components. Yeah, that's great. And I think that when we have uh, a manufacturing operation that specializes in an aspect of the building, one particular component or another, there's some real economies of scale from a purchasing standpoint. So within the make process, obviously one of the benefits is going to be safety. Brian, talk to me about how safety is improved in the make process. Yeah, I think at a very basic level, we're, we're minimizing what would be some, some pretty uh, significant on-site risk with people you know, working at an elevated height, working on narrow, in narrow spaces, um, and we're shifting that inside a much more controlled environment at a fundamental level. I think there's some other great examples that, that uh, we can take advantage of, some great opportunities where, because we're in a controlled environment, we can start to rethink how we assemble things. So, you know, if traditionally we would think that we're gonna have to get on a ladder to assemble some ceiling fixtures, we might decide to assemble that ceiling at level height at chest height and upside down so that we're just setting them into place. So those kinds of things become possible when you've decided to control that construction environment. And we're going to see some real safety benefits there. Yeah, I'd like to stack on that because expanding into advanced components like floor cassettes, for example, we can engineer job site safety aspects into them as well. Uh, I know tying off and different tie off points is a very hot topic with OSHA right now to keep everyone safe on the mm -hmm. job site. In the software and in the floor cassette itself, we can actually engineer and specify the safety tie off point, which can be installed in the factory and then instantly used in the field upon installation. So, guys, second, maybe only to safety, we got to talk about quality. How is quality impacted in the make process? Yeah, no, absolutely. That's a big deal. Uh, especially when I think about, say again, for example, framing a wall panel in the field, you know, in the winter, in Minnesota, it's raining, it's snowing, right? Uh, you're looking for materials, uh, your hands are cold, 
you know, those cuts are going to be difficult to make, the marks are going to be difficult to make. But if you think about bringing that process from the job site to an offsite arena, uh, it's a much more controlled environment, it's a warmer environment, perhaps it's a safer environment, and we can make that component with the highest quality possible. But it's more than that, it's also building those wall panels and other components in the correct order, doing as much sequencing as we can, getting as many components inside that wall panel as we can, and getting it to the job site on time in the correct order to keep that building process as quickly as possible on site. That's right, that's right. And I think that, that uh, quality can now, as you start to embrace a more industrialized approach to construction, you can really start to bring and install quality checks at each stage of the process. So it's not like, oh, let's go build this entire area and then you know we're going to check it at the end. We can build in quality checks at every stage of production and tweak those as we need to. Yeah, absolutely. What else happens that benefits the transition from make to build? Yeah, I think not unlike the transition from design to make, where we have an, a, a much higher level of detail, a set of instructions for exactly how this is going to be fabricated, we really want to extend that same process out of the back end of the factory onto the job site. So we want to create a easy to understand, intuitive set of assembly instructions. Of course, you know, there's a huge advantage that 100,000 parts aren't showing up on the job site. Now it's maybe 100 parts are showing, but even then, can we communicate that sequence of construction as well as deliver them in order to be erected in the proper order in a better way? All right, guys, so ultimately, what is the payoff in the make phase of design, make, build? Yeah, I think, I think fundamentally the, the the alignment, the sequencing of building your off-site components at the same time or very closely with the on-site work should result in an overall reduction of cycle time. And that reduction of cycle time is ultimately going to reduce the overall cost of the building. Pair that with a deeper understanding of the design up front, a deeper understanding of the materials that go into it, increased certainty about the cost, not just a reduction, but that certainty that things aren't going to be a surprise at the last moment. There's not going to be a change that comes at the end. When we invest right up front in that pure design, we manufacture to spec, we're going to see a cost reduction at the end. Yeah, absolutely, and because we're doing those things, we're going to see a sharp increase in quality because those components were built off site, we know they're in the right spot, we know we have the right material, we know we have the, everything in the correct place, uh, which is also gonna help with risk reduction from a safety standpoint. Excellent, thank you both for your time today and thank you for joining us as we talk through the make phase of our Design Make Build series. We hope you'll also join us for our design and build sessions. Please join us in our virtual booth. We'll be there to answer your questions. We look forward to continuing the conversation.